talk about something I see friction in in the sales process constantly when trying to add new CX programs. A lot of times folks run up against tight budgets and it's just a hurdle that people can't overcome as they try to either add a CX program or enhance what's already there. How can a bank use a CX program as a revenue generator rather than just being viewed as strictly a cost center? So that's a really good question. A lot of banks struggle with the fact that they consider their customer experience program to be a cost center, as in something that can get cut when budgets are tight. And it's just something that the bank spends on or can choose not to spend on. But I love the fact that you're talking about make, talking about uh, referring to it as a revenue generator because a good customer experience program really can be a good revenue generator for the bank. It can completely change the dialogue around the, the program. Um, so I, I have an example. Um, I had a client that was a $30, $35 billion community bank. Um, and there was a merger in the market of two competitors. And they wanted to figure out if there was an opportunity for them. So what they did is they took some of the, the, the general market information that they collected to figure out what did the um, customers of those two merged banks think of the new, new merged bank and what did they think of, of the client. And it turns out that it was a bigger bank buying a smaller bank. And that smaller bank, the customers there hated the big bank. From a customer perspective, it was a terrible merger. They had a really low opinion of the, of the new bank, the new overlords. Um, and so they were going to be leaving in droves. They just, it was the worst bank possible to buy them. Oops. Um, obviously, they didn't do their market research beforehand. Um, whereas the client that I worked with um, said, okay, well, what did they think of me? Well, they happened to have quite a good opinion of that particular bank. So what that particular bank did is they spent a huge amount of money marketing in that uh, in the area where that, this merger was happening to say, hey, if you're not happy with the big the, the new big bank, why don't you move to us? And they captured significant market share, I think like 26% market share within a couple of years. And this was in a very competitive, very affluent market. So they were able to take market research and you know turn it into uh, um, dollars right away. Another example, um, about how you can make your customer experience program a uh, revenue generator. Um, was working with a, uh, a bank, a uh, super regional bank, um, and they had just spent a lot of money redeveloping a lot of their technology. Uh, they did everything. They didn't do a core conversion, but they did just about everything else and spent, um, I think, upwards to $100 million in terms of uh, redeveloping a lot of their managed services, their digital services, et cetera. And they were very proud of that. And they were about to launch an ad campaign to say, hey, we've got this great new technology. You should come to our bank. Luckily, right before they were about to launch that uh, ad campaign, they saw the local data, the local competitive data to see, you know, what did people think of them? Why were people switching banks, et cetera? And it turned out that in their market, the, uh, the digital services we're not driving switching at all. As a matter of fact, it was the seventh leading reason people were switching banks. You know, obviously customer service tends to be number one, number two, um, but very few people in their market were switching banks because they were upset or frustrated with their technology, which was just in time. Because as I said, they were about to launch a $35 million ad campaign, and that ad campaign would have been a complete waste of time because they would have said, hey, come to us because we've got great technology. Whereas all, everybody else would have said, I've already got good technology. That's not why I'm switching bank. And they would have ignored that ad campaign. So there's another example about how a customer experience program and market research, that led to a $35 million windfall where they didn't waste that money just based on the research. So there, there's another example about how it can be a Great. So when it comes to getting that competitive data, let's focus on that point first. Uh, where does that come from? What's the best place to get that? Okay. Um, yeah, so as, as I mentioned, it's, you know, internally you get overwhelmingly positive feedback. Um, you know, it's the sort of things where even if you're not doing a customer experience program, you still get some comments on, you know, your Facebook or, or whatever, or just maybe random comments from customers that say, hey, you know, Susie's in the call center is really nice, or Billy's really, really good at helping me out with the, uh, with the uh, mobile app when I have a problem, Billy in the branch, something like that. Um, so it can seem like you're really good at customer service and they probably get high scores for that in their customer service survey. But I could tell you from conducting 
customer service surveys across, I think it's 5,417 banks and credit union, that everybody gets those same positive scores. Um, so every bank gets you know really high scores on customer service, which means customer service is actually average. Great customer service isn't necessarily great. Um, so you really have to get competitive scores and, and, and do your market research across your own footprint. Um, so I'll give you an example. Uh, you know, I've been doing this for, for many, many years. And one of the fun things when you do national surveys is you get to, to slice and dice the data however you want. And so, uh, you know, we get to see things like, do you know what the friendliest city is in the United States? It's Nashville. Nashville is the friendliest major market in the United States. Every single bank gets super duper high scores for friendliness. Um, when you ask how friendly people are at bank A and bank B, but also like restaurant A and restaurant B, hotel A, hotel B, they all get super high scores in Nashville. Why? Because Nashville is a really friendly place and everybody's friendly. So because of that, friendliness does not differentiate at all. So if you've had, if you're a bank in Nashville and you advertise, move to us because we're really friendly. And, and actually there have been a few banks that I've seen do that over the years, say we're friendly because they really are friendly and they're really honest. And they looked at their, their customers and said, wow, our customers say we're really friendly. Let's advertise around that. So they said, hey, move to us. We're the friendliest bank in Nashville. They get no new customers, zero. Because everybody else in Nashville is saying, I've already got super friendly. That's not my problem. Um, whereas on the flip side, if you were a bank in say New Jersey, which is not known for being friendly, and you said, hey, we really are friendly, maybe you would you know, attract customers, but it would be hard to do that with the same population you know, working in your, your, your bank as, as your competitors. Maybe if you bust people in from Nashville, you could do that, but you know, maybe that'd help you to stand out, but I think that'd be difficult. So that's just to say, if everybody's service is, is really, really great, everybody's friendliness is really great, it's actually not a strength. You really have to know how to compare to the other banks in your footprint. And you have to do the research and, and compare your data to theirs. Gotcha. Totally understand the friend, friendliness front. What about other aspects like the digital experience, for example? Um, yeah, yeah. For digital, it works the same, but often the re reverse. A lot of banks and credit unions think that they're not very good at digital. They think, hey, we're really good at customer service and we're not good at digital. And you know, in the, in, for the most part, they're right that they are better at the in-person customer service than the digital. But that does not necessarily say what is their strength. It's compared to the other. So if you are, you know, have good customer service, but everybody's got good customer service, that's not going to help. If you've got pretty good digital and everybody else stinks, then then that might be something to focus on. Um, so I'll, I'll give you an example. I was working with a bank in the South a few years ago and started working with them and they had just earmarked $11 million to upgrade their managed services. A lot of their managed services, like everything except the core conversion, um, their, a lot of their digital services, et cetera. And that was because they knew that their digital, their, their online and mobile banking stunk. They were absolutely sure that, you know, we need to replace this. It's terrible. It's not working. And when we started to dig into why did you think that? Why do you think that? Because they had not done large surveys amongst their own customers. Um, they said, oh, we, we always hear that our, our, our um, technology stinks. It turned out a lot of that fed back to exactly one conversation. And that was the chairman of the board's wife had heard criticism from one of her friends at a cocktail party. Oh, I had such trouble with, with trying to get online with your bank. She tells the chairman, the chairman then says to the, everybody else on the board and the C-suite, so, you know, our, our technology, I've heard our technology isn't very good. Do we need to switch it? And so that became an echo chamber within the, the bank. Oh, okay. We're, we're bad. We need to switch. And they had, they had some other comments, but really um, you could trace it back to that particular comment. Now, fortunately, before they started to spend that $11 million, they, they, we actually did some competitive research for them. So, what do your customers think about your technology? What do your competitors' customers think about their technology? And it turned out that, yeah, their customers weren't super happy with it, but they were actually the best in their market. In a pretty, it's a, in, this, in the South, it's a pretty, pretty large market. Um, all of their competitors had really bad technology. They had kind of bad technology, but everybody else was much worse. So actually, although they, their technology wasn't stupendous, it actually was better than the competitors. And 
they actually had a competitive advantage in technology. Now, it took them a couple of months to sort of accept the data. We said, hey, look, you know what? This isn't just one person. This is thousands of people across your footprint saying this is what they think of your technology and competitors technology. So it took them a while to absorb that and to change their mind and say, wow, I guess we do have a competitive advantage. So what they did was instead of spending $11 million upgrading their technology, they instead earmarked $1 million marketing around their current technology. And so they started promoting, hey, are you frustrated with the technology of your bank? Move to us, it's better. Move to us, it's better. We've got better technology than your current bank. And they ended up gaining significant market share from that $1 million marketing spend. And they saved $10 million in having to uh, upgrade their managed services. So, I mean, there's another example about how, you know, the, 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 the uh, customer experience folks in, at that bank were superstars because they'd saved $10 million and increased the market share. So that's another way you can make your, uh, your customer experience program a revenue generator instead of a, a cost. Love that. Yeah, it's definitely not uncommon for people to over-rotate on anecdotal evidence. And it's not uncommon for people to over-rotate on NPS score, sort of that yeah. overall customer service metric. But I think a lot of the value is actually double-clicking and going deeper into those yeah. components that make up customer service. Yeah.